What's up everybody? Hey, Brian Tong here and the biggest update to all of Apple's OS's, which has really gotten the biggest redesign and navigation change has to be this guy right here. If you could see it, watch OS 10. And so what I'm going to do is to dive into all the changes. We've got some new apps that have been redesigned, some new cycling features, but this is the biggest change out of really any device in Apple's entire lineup. So we're going to jump right into it and start with here, the new navigation. I'm going to hold this up a little higher so you all can see this. But what we have here is you're looking at one of the new watch faces, which we will talk about in a second, but the navigation starts with here, the button that it was normally when you hit it, pulled up uh, your multiple apps at once. Now click it once down here. It shows control center. It kind of makes sense. It's on the bottom and it'll bring up all the different utilities that you'll typically control here just with one click. Then if you want to scroll down from the bottom, which used to be uh, control center, this brings up to the new smart stack. And once you have the smart stack, you can either manually, you know, uh, scroll up to get these different intelligent widgets that show off glanceable information. Now, what I want to do here though, is if I go back to the regular watch face, if I scroll the, um, the digital crown, this also brings up the smart stack and this is going to be contextual. So depending on, um, if you have an appointment on your calendar, it depends on what your activity that you're doing, um, what time of day or where this will change intelligently based on these different widgets. Also, if I want to, I can even, um, add different widgets. So let's hold here and you can see this prompt now shows up where I can, um, right. You see all the ones that I have here, but I'm going to hit plus and these are different ones. Like you can see there's the stock widget there. There's activity, alarms, astronomy, audiobooks, all different kinds. Um, I guess let's just put on, let's put on the activity one. And now if I look here, the activity has been added to this. So I'm just going to hit done. And what you'll see is activity isn't at the very top because right now I'm not really doing anything. So it's kind of prioritized the weather for the day. And then obviously news, then you have activity, calendar, upcoming events. Um, and then here's a kind of fun widget that lets you bounce between music, um, a workout, or the messages app. So that's the smart stacks here, intelligent, and it is contextual based on what you're doing. Now, in other aspects of this navigation, I talked about here, now this is how we get to control center by clicking just once here. Control center pops up, all the utilities. What about if you wanna launch your apps? Well, if I press the digital crown once, this will show me the, that app panel, but instead of it being this big old fat bubble, it is actually these different apps are identified where it's not as random as scattered. It still can be a little mess when you have too many apps, but at least when you wind it up and down, it just feels a little bit more organized. And so this is kind of the new way that you can look at your apps, navigate and choose the ones you want. Also, if I double tap, this will take me to the last app that I was at and then also give you the panel to show all the different apps that you've currently been playing around with. So if I want to, uh, let's say something like this app here, this is my surf app. If I want to um, close it also, this will allow you to manually force close that app as well, just like it did previously on the Apple watch. So you have a few different ways to navigate things. Um, it's a little different, but it actually makes sense and is a lot more cleaner. Now, if we want to talk about more about different ways to navigate and use the Apple Watch. Well, you see this new watch face here, right? Previously in the past, when you swiped left or right, you would be able to change between all the different watch faces that you have. But now what you do here is press and hold. And then from here, you'll be able to switch between the different watch faces that you've already made. And there are two brand new watch faces that are here that are part of the mix. You saw one already. This is called palette. And I love how this is kind of like a, a spectrum of colors and they're really cohesive and kind of feel um, blended. Well, I mean, it actually unintentionally matches my jacket or was that intentional? Did, did I buy this jacket because of this watch face or did this watch face see what I'm wearing and choose these colors? No, it was neither of the two. It just so happened. So if I hold down on here, let's edit this watch face. And not only is this the, the multicolor watch face, but within the palette, you have different ones. This is the emerald green. This one is the hues of what's it? I can't read that. Oh, azure. So blues, marigold, which is oranges and reds, wisteria, which is purples, dandelion, which is different shades of gold and yellow. Um, this one's called storm blue, a little blue and orange. So there's a bunch of different color combinations or kind of monotone colors that you can have as well. I'm going to keep it at this 
Also, if you want to change the complications on the watch, you'll swipe here and then this is where you can choose different complications that are available, uh, you know, depending on what you want. I'm going to keep the temperature there, but if you look at all these complications, I have temperature here, I have my messages, I have uh, my workout, and then I have my activity. Those are the complications that I like for this watch. So I'm gonna keep it here. This is the palette watch face, one of the new watch faces here in watchOS uh, 10. I'm gonna also scoot over one, and let's go check out the Snoopy watch face. Now this is one of the coolest ones because we've seen the Mickey Mouse watch face, but the Snoopy one is a lot more interactive. Every time the watch face appears, I feel like he's him and Woodstock are doing different gestures or moves. If you're working out, he's gonna become active. Let me just um keep on, let me prompt him. Every time I show him up, right, he knows it's nighttime. He's going, oh, let's see if I can get a different one to show up. All right, that's just the standard watch face. Let's go here. Um, play around. Let's see if I can get him to do something. Okay, there we go. Snoopy's now on top of the hand, slides down, and then kind of hangs at the bottom. So this watch face does a lot of different things, and it just makes it fun. Now we talk about brand new watch faces. Palette and Snoopy are the big two, but also Apple has a whole bunch of redesigned apps on the Apple Watch, specifically for Watch OS 10. So let's. Oh, my arm is getting tired, but. Let's jump in here. Oh, here we go. Uh, Snoopy's playing with his typewriter on a barn. Okay, but let's go into, oh, the Woodstock was just on his head. Okay, so let's go into some of these different apps and what they look like. We'll go into the activity app. This is an all new look where I can click here for my weekly summary. I can, um, if you look here, if I scroll the digital crown, I can get access to a different view for, uh, this is my, my calories burned. Here's the minutes of exercise. Here's my standing hours. Clearly, I just put this on a little while ago because I wasn't wearing an Apple Watch the whole day. So the, <laughs> the activity app is different. Let's go here and find something else. Let's go to uh, something like the weather. The weather app looks totally different. It'll take a moment just to load the information, but this is a new way to look at the weather app. You can again scroll the digital crown to see the different uh, the seven day forecast as well. I'm gonna go back here. You can see different conditions, temperatures, all wind. There's a lot of different metrics that you can access to, but the watch face itself just has this new kind of slick look to it. Let's go here now. Oh, there's Chef Snoopy. See, I'm telling you, there's so much stuff. Uh, could we go to something like the, the heart rate? Heart rate app here, also a different look and feel. It's measuring my heart rate right now. Um, this again, all these apps are redesigned for Watch OS 10. I'm gonna jump in here, 108, 110 resting. Okay, that's nice. Let's go into something like uh, the Stocks app. Stocks app, green like money. This is, this is a different look to the Stocks app as well. So you have your different stocks, tech stocks, Amazon, Google, Apple, always an indication of how the market's going. So that's also another different look. And then um, something like the world clock. Let me see, let me, hopefully I press the right one. Here we go. Here's the world clock. Shows a, a time map of you know different locations here in and what the uh, sunlight is going to look like at different times for Los Angeles as I scroll the digital crown. So just a variety of different ways. And there's Snoopy again doing something else uh, on this watch face, but just a variety of different ways that Watch OS 10 has changed things up and just makes it feel really fresh and new, but also really usable in new ways. So. The other thing here, I'm not a big time cyclist, but they've added a lot of cycling features here on the Apple Watch. So if you go into your workouts, um, there's indoor cycle, there's outdoor cycle, but this will automatically connect to Bluetooth cycling sensors and gear. And what's really cool about this is if you are using, um, and if you're cycling, it'll actually be a live activity that's on your iPhone. And then you can actually open up your iPhone to have this completely different display specific to cycling, measuring all these different metrics, uh, just like your functional threshold power, which is a key metric for every 60 minutes when you're cycling. These are all things that I don't do, but I know a lot of my friends that are big cyclists are gonna love those improvements. And finally, the Apple Watch is showing them some love. Okay, so we're back here with the apps and I'm gonna go into the mindfulness app. And the reason why is that we know that mental health has been big for Apple, not only in iOS 17, but also watch OS 10. So what you can actually do is check in with your state of mind and log it. And that also talks to the health app. We talked about how as you continue to check in, it'll start establishing or seeing patterns based on events or times during the month or the week here 
It asked me to get started, log how I'm feeling right now. I mean, it is late at night, but I'm feeling good because I'm looking good. So I can turn the, the digital crown to choose very unpleasant, slightly pleasant, very pleasant. I mean, I'm feeling good. I, I would say I'm on the very pleasant side. So I'm gonna go with that and hit the check mark. And then it asks, you know, words that describe how I'm feeling at this time. So let's just say uh, happy. I always, I love being happy, but I actually am happy. <laughs> Am I? Okay, so there's, uh, you know, another way is to log how you're feeling. This all goes into establishing, you know, different baselines and just really giving you suggestions to how you can be aware of your mental health. Really key, but Apple's leaning into this iPhone and Apple Watch. Also, if we go in here, let's try and pull up the Compass app. Let me find it. I have it typically down here, I believe. Okay, here it is. So here's the Compass app. And what's different now is if you are going on a hike or a walk, it's going to indicate, um, you know, you have that waypoint view. It's going to show you where the last cell connection was. So you can always be able to kind of go back to that point in case you need to make a call. And then also the last emergency call waypoint that you have if you need to make any type of emergency call. But the key thing why that is there on this watch is because there is no SOS satellite emergency call, but these are two new uh, points that will show up on the Compass app while you're walking around. You also have Apple Maps on here, which has added different topography uh, to kind of give you a better look at elevation as you're going on trails and whatnot. And then with watchOS 10, it's it just feels cleaner. It also feels snappier and faster than it has before. So I think just the overall redesign, the, the new visuals, the new navigation, and it feels really nice and speedy. Those are all improvements that have happened across the board for the Apple Watch with watchOS 10. Now, if you're wondering, okay, what it is gonna be compatible with, uh, watchOS 10 will run on the first Apple Watch SE, the second generation Apple Watch SE, and then Apple Watch Series 4 and higher. This is gonna be available in fall. It is available right now with the public beta, but you do have to install the iOS 17 public beta on your phone to then allow you to update the watch. Um, but Overall, it's been a great experience. Again, uh, I just love specifically what they're doing with the Apple Watch because it does feel like more than a fresh coat of paint, but moving in a new direction with glanceable information, which was really the roots of what they started with, but they couldn't get it just right. And now the fact that I can just scroll here, pull up my glanceable information on top of my watch face and make it easy to, you know, that's coming from processing power, the ability for the watch to do more that maybe it couldn't do in the very first gen. I mean, we are at, Apple Watch, what, Series 8 and Apple Watch Ultra. So that's been a long time for this to improve and you can see that it's just made this device so much better. So there you have it, just a first look at watchOS 10. It will be available officially coming this fall, but the public betas are out right now. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this kind of breakdown, but these are the big new features, the redesign and the new navigation in watchOS 10. I got plenty more videos for you all, so come on back and I'll see you later, all right? Peace and love.